as they do in Oxford, as far as I understand. That, that's an Oxford way of mentoring in small groups. Okay, so I am very happy to introduce the talk of uh, Nadav Gropper from Oxford, but his master's he did here at WIS, Weizmann Institute, and announced his talk on an abelian construction of uh, phi gamma modules. Um, yeah, so first uh, I would like to thank the organizers a lot for uh, inviting me to speak and also say that kind of some of the ideas that I will present here are a uh, work in progress. So it's not the most kind of general that I'm hoping this could be, but I'll try and present kind of what I have at the moment. Um, so first of all, um, the first two things I would like to kind of do is explain in this talk what an abelian construction is and try and convince you that it's actually something that can bring up lots of new uh, interesting results. So kind of section, first thing I want to talk about is what is uh, an abelian geometry. So this um, begins, the story begins um, from Crotton Dick's uh, Annabellian uh, conjecture. And in um, the main idea of Annabellian geometry is that you can say a lot about a variety from its fundamental group. And so, first conjecture is that um, all hyperbolic curves over number fields can be completely determined by their fundamental group. Um, but I will mainly be focusing on the um, I mentioned the zero case. Um, and there we have that the total fundamental group of the field is a, its absolute Galois group. And so um, the first kind of ideas about this direction is by uh, Okshida and uh, Neukirch um, um, about how given two number fields and an isomorphism and so we have two number fields K and K prime and we have some um, isomorphism Sigma of the absolute Galois groups. And in fact, what we have is that there exists some isomorphism of their algebraic closures such that um, it induces and that the restriction of it induces an isomorphism of the fields. And that the original sigma uh, actually comes from this geometric um, field isomorphism. And another way of kind of phrasing this ideas is that if we look at the outer morphisms between the two groups, so um, morphisms from one group to the other and uh, mod the uh, inner uh, automorphisms of the second group. So this thing is in bijection with the isomorphisms of the fields. So kind of one interesting things 
this will tell us is that outer morphisms of the absolute Galois group of the rationals must be trivial. Um, and then, okay, so there's not much to say on the number field case, but the interesting thing comes when we look at the local case, which is a theorem um, of a uh, Shinichi Mochizuki. Um, quite an old theorem of his that if we have two now periodic fields, then we don't have exactly the same, but if we also ask those uh, automorphisms to preserve the ramification filtration, and then we do have that all the uh, morphisms kind of come from geometry. And then another interesting fact, which comes from um, the presentation of a Galois group of a periodic field is the following, and that one might ask, can we take away this um, filtered condition? And we have that there are actually uh, non-trivial elements of the automorphism group of QP. This is kind of the starting point of all of these uh, things I want to talk about. Um, and then the second point I want to discuss is um, the following. Second part was about the arithmetic topology. And this is why I think a lot of the ideas I'm going to present might actually and say interesting stuff. And also if I'm writing too small or anything like this, please let me know. Um, so arithmetic topology gives us kind of a heuristic analog that we can think of the integers in some sense as a three manifold and of the periodic numbers, their extensions as uh, surfaces. Uh, I will not go too much into why all of these ideas, where these ideas come from, but maybe kind of one of the reasons is that um, the way Galois groups absolute Galois groups of um, these things look like is very similar to the profinite completions of fundamental group of surfaces. Um, but there are also some other reasons to why um, one would want this. So kind of, uh, GPP has a known presentation. Do you mean the poppy quotient? Uh? When, when you said that the absolute Galois group uh, resembles the surface group, do you mean the property, the property, maximal property quotient or the full absolute value group? So, it's not important. If you think. Yeah, so let's say for yes, if we take the maximal property, maximal property, yes, that would be. Thank you. Um, And so kind of following from this analogy, um, what would the outer morphisms 
of the Galois group B, they should be similar to the automorphisms of Pi one, which is um, the uh, mapping class group of the surface. And for example, some properties of the mapping class group is that there is this very nice geometric uh, object uh, Dane twists, which generates the mapping class group. And for example, um, some known automorphisms here look very similar uh, algebraically to Dane twists. Um, and then what does all of this have to do with representation theory? So for some uh, Lie group uh, nice enough, we have that, um, we have two things. First of all, we have the Teichmuller space, one of the interpretations of Teichmuller space of the surface is by um, deformations of um, Geary representations of pi one of s. And then we also have an action of automorphisms on this deformation space. Um, and one of the very nice things about this action is that this action has um, good dynamical properties. So, Um, for example, it is ergodic. Um, so from this kind of analogy, one would want to have uh, to see kind of the question that I started from is, um, How does the automorphism of the Galo group of a periodic field um, act on periodic representations? And so the, one of the kind of main ways to look at all of this is to ask um, what can be unabilionally constructed from the Galois group or in other terms, given say an abstract group, which is a similar, which is isomorphic to a Galois group, how much of the object can be reconstructed group theoretically and what objects cannot. So let me be a bit more precise about all of this. Um, so first of all, part of the proof uh, that Mochizuki gave uh, So in Mochizuki's proof, um, one also gets um, uh, that being Hodge Tate is not a functorial group theoretic. And what do I mean by that? That if I have some automorphism, which is not filtered, and uh, does not preserve the ramification filtration, then there exists 
some Hodge tape representation such that um, kind of uh, new representations that we get from the automorphism just by composition by the automorphism. Um, is not Hodge state. Um, and in fact, some other works of uh, Hoshi give uh, similar results um, for uh, the RAM representations. And one wants to ask himself what kind of classes of representations might be preserved under any a group automorphism. And this was kind of the main reasoning to go into phi gamma modules and um, because there's some of the um, action of this slightly mysterious automorphism group is easier to see. Um, okay, so the, uh, So we have now let G be uh, some abstract uh, group. Which just as abstract groups is isomorphic to some chaotic field. And So we call this um, mix local field uh, type. What do you mean by abstract group? So we ignore the topology. You don't require that. Yeah, no topology. Just just group. The group. yeah. Just as abstract groups, no. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, just as non-topological groups. Uh, we will see in a moment um, that we can get back the topology very easily. Um, and so we want all these constructions to be uh, functorial and to be kind of defined only in group theoretical meanings. So we don't get such a thing that, um, that we had for Hodge state. Mm -hmm. So kind of a uh, fact that I will show some of these things, but um, given such G, we can uh, construct functorially group theoretically. And the following, so first of all, uh, topology on G, which um, corresponds to the profile topology on the uh, absolute Galois group just by declaring the open subgroups to be the ones of finite index. Um, you can get back uh, the um, prime uh, of QP. You can get back the degree of the extension of F over QP. Um, the degree of the um, residue field over the uh, F key. And um, so unification index. So wild unification and inertia sub in the inertia subgroup. Um, and get an element back. You can get back the Frobenius element. And the thing is that we cannot reconstruct back all the field. And this was kind of what was seen before that um, fields cannot be reconstructed from the Galois group um, in the PID case. But what we can get is we can get back um, the higher units. Um, so we can get back the units. 
And from this, we can get back the additive structure for the multiplicative, but we cannot get both the additive and the multiplicative at the same time. Um, because kind of the way of getting the additive structure is by kind of a log map. So it's just declaring that the perfection of the multiplicative structure is the additive structure in some sense. Um, and then in say specific cases such as it's a case where we have no ramification and the prime is not two. Then we can also construct a ring of integers and the additive structure on the ring of integers. And also oh, yeah, one more thing that we can construct is the cyclotomic character. Um, okay, so I will now try and explain very quickly how do we get some of these uh, things back uh, group theoretically. Um, Um, yeah. So first of all, we know from and we know that the units um, sit inside the abelianization of the uh, group, and we also know how the units of a periodic field look like. Where A is some integer, and I'm not exactly explain what it is. And kind of from such structure theory, we can then define back the prime of G and is the unique prime. Such that um, the size of the abelianization mod torsion. Um, is p to a power greater than n. Greater than two, greater or equal, sorry. And we can define d of g from Again, the structure to be this thing minus one. F of G will be just the torsion part. And where we take out the P part. And then we um, add one ramification simply d of g divided by f of g. Then we can also get um, by taking uh, the intersection of all the uh, open normal um, subgroups with E being the same as E of G and um, yeah, we can also get in a very similar manner, the well ramification and so on. 
and from duality theories um, we can get the cyclotomic character just by putting it to be the following module. Um, but what we see from all these definitions, for example, is what we might kind of expect, at least for, say, the degree, is that any um, automorphism of our Galois group kind of preserves all this fundamental stuff of the field. Um, and also it preserves um, the first two parts of the ramification filtration. Um, yeah, so any questions uh, before I move on to more of the FIDA module? And it just maybe if you can if you can say again what is the uh, the last line there's zp in the one can you so the tape twist of zp so kind of how the cyclotomic character would be is by duality would be h2 of the field and it's coefficients in that okay, thank you yeah um so there's some other slightly kind of ways of defining the cyclotonic character from these things and you can also get back say the valuation and so on um but yeah i just want to give a bit of a taste of how these things are constructed um So now I'll make a slightly strong assumption, but it will still give us quite an interesting case, which we will assume we are just in the kind of QP case in the degree one. Um, why do I assume this? Because there's kind of a very easy way of getting back the field, which I said in general, you cannot get, reconstruct but you can reconstruct the field um, in this case. And actually, I am pretty sure, but it's not yet written down that um, in abelian Galois extensions, you should also be able to get back the field from just an abstract group. Um, in terms of the way you get back the ring of integers or QP, um, would be to take um, the kind of cyclotome of G. Um, so we can construct the multiplicative structure on the um, algebraic closure. And if we take the torsion there and we take kind of a limit um, over the n torsion, we get something which um, in the usual case, not of an abstract group would be a uh, um, rank one ZP module. And so kind of taking its automorphism, you get back something which is uniquely isomorphic to ZP. Um, And now, given now that, is it clear that there exists a unique field such that G is isomorphic to GF? I mean, probably That's it's correct. Here's uh, what the Siegel uh, Nikolov theorem, but but is it something easier or just Be, because the, the isomorphism is is abstract, right? You you induce the topology by the isomorphism. Did I understand correctly? Yes. 
So, so is it clear why there is a unique F or maybe there, is, there are several F? Is it possible the two F has a abstract isomorphism? Between oh yeah, absolutely. So in a lot of cases, for example, if I don't make this assumption of BG equals to one, then yeah, there can be a lot of different isomorphisms and I don't use isomorphism again in any of the um, kind of reconstructions. All you get from this isomorphism is that you know the general structure of the group as an abstract group. Um, but yeah, in general... I, I think um, the group is finitely generated uh, as a profinite group, so, so, so the, the topology is... is uh, follow, I mean, the topology is induced from the group theory, but this is a very deep theorem. Yes. Because you can put different topologies and get different completely different objects. I mean... Um, I mean the, the thing that, travel, that I don't understand well is, is when the fact that you start with an abstract group and not with a topological group. But in retrospective, I mean, if there is a deep theorem of uh, Dan Siegel and Nikolai Nikolov that tell us that a, a finely generated profile group, the topology, is induced from the abstract uh, group theory. But, but um, maybe it's not an issue I'm trying to... Yeah, so in that case it is uh, finitely generated and finitely presented. Right. Okay. So it should, I'm pretty sure, work. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. Um, But yeah, kind of under looser conditions, we can also take a topological group um, because later on, we, when we go back to the applications to um, Galois groups of chaotic fields, we always want to, uh, the automorphisms to be continuous anyways. And there we already have the topology. Um, so yeah, I'm taking a lot of Generalities which can be taken less in certain situations where there are problems. Um, and so, yeah, given an isomorphism, continuous isomorphism of this to a uh, mixed local field uh, type groups, then kind of have a associated functor. So of G is kind of the ring of integers uh, connected to it. Um, it's just ZP of G in our case. It's given a representation. We send this to the G tag representation on which G tag is act by the following. And We want to see what does this thing uh, do to crystalline representations. Um, and then kind of Theorems that I've been writing up um, is that the categories of uh, phi gamma modules um, over um, E or A, as it appears in a lot of places in the literature, or over convergent ones or phi gamma modules over the robot ring. So all of these categories are functorial group theoretical, um, which kind of 
you would kind of expect that as they are um, equivalent to this thing, which is obviously group theoretical, um, but a priori, you're not sure, for example, the equivalence uh, functor is not uh, necessarily functorial group theoretical. And actually, in a lot of cases, if you take just a general um, unramified, uh, general ramified extension of QP, um, I at least am not sure how you would get back to five L modules. Um, so, what are these categories? I will quickly recall and define for uh, people who are unsure or yeah um so first of all we have these coefficient rings which can be seen as a series with a integer coefficients such that the coefficients go to zero as n goes to minus infinity. Um, we also have an overconvergent version of this and we have the rubber ring, which is things and um, field coefficients such that f uh, converges on some uh, non empty and um, open unlike. And of a very sketch of um first of all why can we reconstruct and group theoretically well just taking this definition if we have if we can reconstruct the field or the ring and the ring of integers and also the valuation which is kind of convergent issues only needs a valuation in some sense then we can kind of redefine this and so kind of again given such a, a isomorphism, we will take one power series to another such that Pn would be um, sigma of say f. So we already have this functoriality in the field. So elements in the field functorially go to elements of the corresponding field. And once I need to check that actually anything which converges here will converge here. Um, yeah. Um, so we have those coefficient rings and then Given those coefficient rings, we also have um, a phi action which again, since we have P is functorial, the phi action would easily be functorial. And we have a gamma, which is G mod H, where H is the kernel of the cyclotomic character. And so since the cyclotomic character is functorial group theoretical, then so is its kernel, and so is gamma. And kind of any outer morphism or automorphism of G descends to an automorphism of those gammas. And the gamma action on the coefficient ring following um, 
And again, kind of the functoriality is through the induced and thing on gamma and by composition. And then definition is that a phi gamma module over any of those coefficient rings is a finite dimensional and module. with a commuting and semi-linear and phi and gamma actions. And Then why do we care about phi gamma modules and very important theorem? Um, is that we have these equivalents from um, representations to phi gamma modules. More explicitly, um, takes the Unramified maximal unramified uh, extension of this coefficient ring, and then we take completion of it and we tend to reveal over this and we take the um, age invariant. Um, so this kind of thing is obviously an E module and has a Phi action, which is kind of how we get this induced thing on um, this D of E of V. And one remark is that the uh, um, Galois group of this E and um, unramified over E is exactly H. Um, and then in a similar one manner, something can be done for the rubber ring, but actually we also have the following that this functor for the rubber ring is the same as um Doing the functor for the over or over convergent ones, and in fact any um sorry and um, any phi gamma module which is in the image of this is actually already over convergent, um, and why do I want this? Interpretation because then I only have kind of one object which I need to still show that is functorial group theoretical, and um, because all the other things in this picture I've already kind of briefly discussed. Um, And then um, 
we would like to have the following. Um, so we want to have uh, to understand what the functors that I explained before uh, on the um, representation side does to phi gamma modules and kind of naively what one can do is um, take this functor and just look at the image of this functor under the outer morphism and then the correct kind of uh, sigma action on phi gamma modules would be to um, both twist the action of the coefficient ring and twist the gamma action by the induced gamma action um and kind of more generally since this v is not a completely functorial group theoretically um kind of i won't discuss too much but there is some uh interesting twist to the phi action um but kind of the main reason why all of this i think is quite interesting is that under this equivalence, we know that, for example, crystalline representations can be characterized as ones for which um, there's like a uh, lattice inside them on which the gamma action is one with coefficient in a slightly smaller ring um, for which mod p is actually trivial. But kind of from all of this, one gets much more immediately the like crystallines under at least this uh, diagram should uh, be preserved by any automorphism of the Galois group. And so something kind of subtle is happening on the action of the automorphism group on deformation spaces of representations, because on the one hand, they do something non-trivial to Hodge Tate, but they send crystallines to crystallines, and crystallines, for example, sit densely inside the deformation space of a multiple representation. And getting a bit maybe philosophical and ahead of myself because some of these things are not yet fully written out, things I'm saying now. Um, but from all of this, I am seeing quite a bit of evidence that there should be some interesting dynamics um, under presentation theory of Galois. Um, groups um which should kind of imitate the picture i explained in the beginning for type motor space in the mapping class groups of surfaces um and yeah so i guess that's kind of the main things i wanted to say and so i think i'll finish here thank you very much Questions, please. <laughs> Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. 
Well, so, some number of questions was asked during the talk. I have a funny question, but not the mathematical one. Mm -hmm. Can I ask? Yeah. So you had a group G and you had PG, which was the prime, right? Yeah. And FG, which was the field, and then you had theorem G. What? What does it mean? And then I had what? You have theorem in, in bracket G. Oh, G is just so the for group is theorem. G is for group rates. So, yes, yeah, so a theorem of the five L modules is a theorem I'm writing up now. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Okay, any further questions, mathematical or not? <laughs> Funny or sad? <laughs> okay, then uh, let us ask, let us thank Nadav again. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, next week we have no seminar due to a very relevant online conference. Here is a link, it's virtually in CIRM organized by people from Marseille. And uh, the week after that, on uh, June 2nd, we will have a, a seminar by Danish Tor from the Open University. So see you in two weeks.